Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr, where we talk about the art and culture of running an independent record label. And today is a new episode in our Sync licensing series, where we're looking to help take the mystery and demystify the uh, entire Sync licensing world, specifically for record labels. And today we're talking about music libraries and we're speaking with a music library in fact we're speaking with bam music a super reputable and awesome music library and so today's interview is with the ceo pierre michel louvois pas mal eh? and so bam is a music resource for audio professionals filmmakers and content producers who are looking to find a soundtrack for their visual projects uh, whether it be for tv advertising youtube or social media and bam provides really high quality music from a hyper curated community of artists and producers and record labels from all over the world. And it's a music library. And we discussed what a music library is in our What is Sync licensing episode. And it's one of the many ways that artists and labels can further monetize their catalog in the world of, of sync licensing. And so this it, it, BAM is a platform and, and music libraries are, are often platforms that have a simplified search process that uses, in, in this case of BAM, it uses handpicked themes and genres and feelings even to help content creators find the right track as quickly as possible. So we're going to talk about music libraries in this episode with Pierre, and we're going to talk about how record labels um, can utilize this and how creatives and artists can utilize music libraries to help them earn revenue in the sync licensing space. Before we move on, remember, you can download my free guide to sync licensing by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash sync, where I'm putting a lot of the notes from this series, some checklists and some helpful resources for you in a complete guide that you can download for free by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash sync. Well, great to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this. I, I love your website and there's so much I want to talk about and so much wisdom I want to glean for you. So thank you for doing this. Well, you're, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Our audience is made up of primarily record label owners and employees in a way as well. Uh, where should a small record label owner start when they want to get into music licensing, specifically when they want to exploit their existing catalog? Well, uh, uh, that's a tricky one. Um, I think it really depends on your network and connection. You know, uh, it, if you some people are connected to creative in agencies etc and 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 then maybe the best is to you know activate your network because they they always looking for you know stories organic stories about labels artists uh, and and it's always a good way to 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 promote yourself it's very authentic now um most of us don't have the all this connection so there are now more and more agencies that are, you know, providing services for things. And uh, the best is to probably review um, who's who's available and 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 pitch your label uh, and 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 music. Obviously, you need to to be in a genre that that is, you know, sync friendly and, okay. and work with images. Um, but um, so yeah, so you can review. You know, there, there's you, you can find contacts. You know, on on LinkedIn, on events, and uh, on obviously on the internet. So you, you'll find you, you'll find the, the, the right agencies. And I would recommend to pick up you know people you get along well with and that correspond to your profile. Mm. Tell us about Bam because I, you know I, I tell us what it is and and I'd love to hear the backstory on it. Oh sure, uh, Bam is a library music um, you know entity. So we. We, we are both producer and publisher of our catalog and we also distribute other catalogs um, and we, we we call them labels uh, but we're, we're not record labels as you know we're, we're not promoting artist sure. career yeah uh, we're not we're not doing video clips we're not pushing things on radio well, our, our, you know what we bring to the conversation is we, we bring ready to use you know music for sync you know um, to, to all the content, you know, content producers. So it, it's all TV formats and um, advertising, brand content, and all internet format now. And so the, the background story behind it, it started in, 
ago in 2005, it was three friends composer uh, who studied their own venture to actually be able to, um, to to work better together and have an entity to to address you know briefs and clients, and they were doing nice. A lot of tracks we want to we we could uh, I mean that haven't been used for any reason, but not because they were bad tracks, but because it didn't fit to the the brief or whatever. And they started to do their own catalog, which is very often the case in in, in a lot of library. Mm. I mean some a lot of indie libraries. And, and you know those guys were very smart, so they and they, they end up ended up creating a very nice catalog. Um, the build a website, find a network of you know a distribution company. Um, they would distribute distribute themselves in in France, but find 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 a network of you know international publisher abroad. And you know Bam Catalog as a library was born, and that was back in two thousand and ten or you know approximately, wow. and. I, I've joined the, the 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 company much later on in 2017 um, because prior to that I was um, my background is I started a record label in the 90s uh, for oh. 10 years and then moved to the library world in in the 2000 and 2004 um, and and was the head of you know Universal uh, Production Music right. Business Unit in France right and in and in two, 2015 I realized that. You know, basically, I I had done a, an incredible. Um, I, I had a great life at Universal. I I, I was really happy with the, everything that happened there. It, it's it's a great company, but I felt I needed to go back to the entrepreneurship, to say all the possibilities uh, the, the the modern world is and the digital world is, is offering. So I I start thinking of a project of an indie library, pitched it to a finance partner, and and the, the first step of that project was to actually buy acquire a catalog because starting from scratch is, is never easy wow. and we that's the moment i, I met the bam guys and uh, basically i took over the company in 2017 okay interesting so so that, that's the backstory of, of yeah that, so the backstory of, of me and bam is started in 2017 and we really got along well with the funders w one of the three guys wanted to focus only on commission music for uh, for films so he he basically left the company, and the, the two other founders are still you know working for us as composer. They wanted to go back in the studio, so they were happy to <laughs> for me to take on the company. And and yeah. then and now they only focus on creative, you know, production and composing. That's beautiful. So Bam, let's can you help clear this up for me? Because Bam is a music library, as I understand it. So you have music libraries. What are the other categories? in the sync licensing world, just so that we can understand the separation? Well, basically you have two categories, which is like, you know, artists and record labels and, and library labels. Uh, and what, what makes the difference is, I mean, music is music, but um, when you produce, you know, an artist, you, you, you're, you're producing music for the sake of it. You, you, you want to produce you know, like uh, songs and, 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 Put out an album and promote it and build a career for the artist and 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 develop a tone and mm -hmm. and uh, a unique work um uh and so that's that's record companies and publishers uh library is you know you, you you're part of a you're, you're part of the audiovisual post-production you know uh, world and you're, you're providing a resource for editors and content producers and filmmakers to actually find music in a very easy way i fast. see and not expensive where uh, they, that they can use uh, because music can be very tricky to when you come to run. Library music as opposed to uh, record label music um, is made for, you know, we're, we're part of the post-production world where we are servicing a music uh, solution um, to editors and filmmakers and content creators. Um, and so we... There's lot of, lots of different formats. We, you can you can you know produce music for TV. You can produce music for like promos for trailers. Uh, you can produce music for documentary films. Um, and all are very you know specific, and it's very broad at the same time. It can it can you know step into so much you know so many. So, you you it, it's it's a knowledge to produce this music that fits on images that that has a narrative edge um and 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 can really you know um uh, be very compatible with images 
obviously library we uh, in the library we also produce like um pop music you know any genre of pop music you know it can be you know hip-hop soul rock and roll heavy metal uh country music we have all those genres and, and in a very poppy writing right um but 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 the purpose is to to to, to bring a, a resource to to the the, the the audiovisual you know world right Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think that, I, I think that's what I like about your site. And I think that when you're, so correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm, I'm a director, I'm a producer, uh, or I'm an ad agency, I, that's, that's why things are categorized by not necessarily genre, but even, even just moods or sp specific types of um, video productions like sci-fi or uh, human history or sports. Uh, so really, this platform is is geared towards um, directors and, and and the video producers. Correct? Absolutely. And uh, one of the challenges we have is you know how to make our music easy to to find. And the, the challenge for an editor is he's in the room and he has like. X minute of music uh, of of program to edit in the day. You know yeah. whether you're doing a, a a daytime TV show or a documentary. You're doing you know X X minute of of, of film uh, and and um, program every day, and you you can easily spend hours searching for the right piece of music for your scene. And and we, I mean, one of our responsive role and, and target is to simplify this search and and make it easy for the user, which is quite complex because. When you think of it, we, the average, you know, um, human being has a very limited list of words to describe music. Um, yes, that's and right. It, 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 it's it's a bit like when you talk about a wine. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, some people has a long, uh, an, an amazing vocabulary ah, describing, yes. describing, <laughs> describing wine. You know, it's not just because I'm French, but. <laughs> you know, when you go to the restaurant, you, you, you have like, oh, it says like this and that and that. It's like, but we don't have, I mean, I don't have this vocabulary when it comes to wine. And <laughs> okay. and, and and for for most of the, the people dealing with music, it's it's the issue, you know, what, how I want this sort of music, but is it electro? Is it EDM? Is it like mm. uh, electro pop? Or is it like, uh, uh, you know, 90s French house? You know, it, it's very hard to know. And then uh, describe the energy, it was like build up inspirational yes. uh, whatever and and so the challenge is to 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 push this content and make it easy to find so yes we use genre we use, we use moods we use we use the bpm um and we push playlist and we find all sorts of you know, editorial ways to 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 make the content easy to find, to make the music easy to find. Well, that's a very good point because I never thought of it that way. But music, uh, sorry, video producers, uh, editors, and videographers and directors, they're not in the music industry, so they may not even be familiar with all of the subgenres. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and this is where this is this is one of the reasons I've done BAM. Uh, well, one is I just love this industry. Yeah, production music, I think, is is fantastic for many, many aspects. Um, uh, but also because I think that there, there, there's still a lot of room of for improvement in the way we <clears throat> we curate uh, and we push music. And there's also a, 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 a vast room for creativity in in the library music field. And that that's that's Bami is all about. You know. Um, uh, we, we are really challenging ourselves to improve the uh, journey to our website and provide, you know, very high-end crafted labels, which are at the same time very creative, very indie, and also that fits the the needs of an editor, you know. And, yes. and obviously, you can edit a lot of music uh, on the film, but um, you will notice that even even from the artist side of things, they they pick up you know tracks that are highly compatible with images. And 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 Bam is very much about you know finding the new labels, finding the new producers, the new the very fresh contributors in, into that field and bring it to the the editors. I see. I know there's stock. I know there's stock audio sites like Audio Jungle that are more like sound effects and jingles, and not yeah. really artist driven. They're not visually. Um, beautiful like your website what are those sites called and how do they differ from a, a, a library like bam 
Well, the, in our world, I mean, in, in the library music world, there, there's a lot of segments. Um, and, and it's like it already in, in, in most of the industries, you know, you, when you, you're not familiar with it, you, you, see, you see it as a, as a whole, as a, as a unique, you know, uniform, uh, something that is very uniform. And, yeah. and, and when you dig in it, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, segment. And, you know, just think of, you know, film production companies somehow specialize in this and some in that. And, and there's a lot of different vibe and personalities and, and, and profiles. It's exactly the same with libraries. So some will be much more, as you say, like focus on, you know, sound effects and be- very functional stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and, and some will be very like, efficient for sports and and action some will be very specialized in radio formats which is another has a lot of specificities and some will sound very us some very uk some very mm. like non non anglo-saxon like french or european and and we in within this there's still a, a another yeah there's lots of different you know, variation variations okay um so th- so there's the whole whole world and yeah we we, we tend to be you know, we want to refresh the proposal that is offered to to the uh, to the editors, uh, and, and that's the exciting part of the challenge, really, too, because there's so much there's a, a, um, a, an absolute an amazing um, number of really I mean super talented composers that are producing music, and our, our we we pride ourselves to to find the, the the most I mean some I would say I tend to say the most interesting you know. Uh, but I mean, some some very interesting one, and and bring them to the market. Yeah, yeah, and I think that you know a good director, a good uh, video producer wants the music to be. I mean, it's not just background music, even though the 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 viewer of the of the the advertisement or the movie or the TV show isn't necessarily paying attention to the music subconsciously. There's something happening there. So as a director, I would want it to be cool or it to be really unique in the same way that you want the uh you know the the um, cinematography to be unique even though you may not be paying attention to the cinematography it's there subconsciously absolutely that's very well said uh that's exactly what music is what's fascinating about music in 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 films is it is the most um um it's the sense that it's most connected to your brain. Um, there's been studies, you know, n- neuroscience have been, you know, st- st- proved that, you know, the, the ear and, and the sound is the most connected to your brain and the, the, the faster having a response in your brain mm. from all your senses. And so it's the, it's the number one factor of engagement when you look, look to a movie. And, and that's why music is so present in, in all the, uh, the, the movies and especially in blockbuster because it it convey the emotion and it convey your attention you know more than any, even more than the image um, and but but at some point what, what you say is very true and sometimes you just don't you, you can't see it and and it's it's very subtle subtle and it's it's behind the scenes I mean there's music but you don't just don't realize there's music yeah. and it's, and still is there and it plays the role that it, that it has to play. Yeah, no, that's true. When I here's a question for you uh, from an artist standpoint. When I look at a website like yours, it's beautiful. I, I want to have my music here. It, it functions super well for someone looking for music, as we've discussed. But it also makes me feel, if I were an artist on your website, I would feel like a a small fish in a big ocean. How do you avoid having artists get overlooked on the platform? Uh, and, and how is there like an equal opportunity for my tracks to be discovered? <laughs> that's that's yeah that, that's that's one of the the issues <laughs> um i think you know the, the the mindset of when you're an artist um uh, when you do library music um is 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 it, you have to look at this in a different way than when you're producing uh, an album as an artist um and it is you library music career you know is built more onto like a long-term production where you produce um um as an artist, you produce like one album and another, and it's it's not to say like you mu- you must do volume, but it's about it, it it's it's a long term thing, and yeah. and it's you, you you're gonna produce like one album and and an, an, another album etc. And you you fine tune your craft, and and you you're gonna multiply the placements in TV etc. And it's a bit of a it's a bit of a we we use the term golden dust. You know, it's it's a bit you 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 take a little bit of pieces after pieces, you know, putting, um, 
a lot of tracks together and having a lot of placements as opposed to an artist which is they, they are you're doing one album every x years and and when you try to to maximize the the, the the use of each track or album I so see. It's, it's, it's a different you know approach years ago i would have thought to just upload any composition or instrumental mix i had on my hard drive in hopes that something will get used and get me paid is is music licensing about quality or quantity like is is a catalog of 10 amazing high quality songs better than a catalog of a hundred mediocre tracks well i think that uh if we're talking library music, we, we are more talking about a catalog of few thousand tracks right. as opposed to a catalog of a um, few hundred thousand tracks. Um, and at BAM, we clearly made a choice here where we didn't want to go for the biggest catalog. And you can easily sign a lot of labels from you know everywhere with all stuff, you yeah. know, and, and you can make you, you can make volume. And we didn't want that. I think the, we. My experience, you know, it's, I, I've been in this industry for almost 20 years, is, you know, it, people like to have volume because it's kind of, it reassure you. Say, like, if there's like 500,000 tracks, there must be the good, the tracks I need. <laughs> and and it, it's it's not like that, you know, yeah. but because probably half or two thirds of the, those tracks will be old, will be like more than, you know, 10 plus years. And w w with BAM, we said like, no, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't please the clients in that way. We should please the clients finding the right track for, for their production. So we, we, we've decided to go for like around 50,000 tracks at maximum approximately. Right. Okay. Because we, 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 we want to get rid of all these, the sleeping catalog, which is polluting the searches and everything. And we want to focus on fresh catalog. So 80% of our catalog is, has less than 10 years. So the rates oh. of tracks that are actually very contemporary is much higher than many of the, the big ones. Okay, um, and and we sign a lot of fresh new uh, labels for for that reason as well, because not only they are creative, but they are contemporary and they are the sound of the moment. And what what you need as a client is you, you need to find music that is that that looks like the moment, that looks like us now, not not something that is was produced like in two thousand and three and and doesn't sound yeah. so exciting anymore. So um, that's a great point. So, so I'm interested to know then that you, so you're saying that you will remove music that you, you try to keep it fresh. So th things that aren't working, you're removing. Well, it's, it's just like, we don't sign catalogs that are, you know, um, providing music that is maybe too old or doesn't have this, okay. you know, crispy interest. Okay. So, uh, and lucky enough, you know, we're young, so our catalog is still very fresh, you know, and, yeah. um, and we will probably face the moment where, you know, maybe we, we, we put some of the tracks in archives, so we still have time for that. But Right. I've heard a lot about exclusive and non-exclusive when it comes to libraries and catalogs. I'm wondering if you can demystify this topic a bit for us. I know a lot of artists enjoy the concept of non-exclusive because it's less threatening and it opens them up to more potentially more opportunities, but I know there's also advantages to an exclusive relationship. Can you uh, tell me about that? Well, the, the feedback we have from music supervisors is they, they really want to you to have exclusive stuff. Um, they, they, it's very, it, it put them in a, a very awkward position where they have a track with one quote from one source and the same track with it from another source at a, another price. Mm. And, and it's very confusing. And for the, the people uh, they're working for the, the production, it, it's, it's not good. So uh, all the, all the feedback we have is, you know, they, 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 they're much more comfortable and actually some are asking for exclusive, exclusive stuff only. So everything we, we do is exclusive. Okay. No, that makes sense. And uh, Maybe to, to, to add a, an, another yeah. thing to clarify, when we do license, then it's non-exclusive, obviously. Oh, I see. Okay, but you only but you want um, you want the songs that are available on your catalog are not allowed to be available anywhere else. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, and I've heard that what, before. What we do, yeah, and we, we there's few exceptions where we 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 have our catalog present on some platforms that are you know. Let's say in the U.S., we we we're using a platform that is dedicated to radio placements, and so we we have this guy who is doing this, and and on top of us doing servicing the rest. So 
that's a form of non non exclusivity, but but that's very much on purpose. Right. Okay. No, that's interesting. So if I'm a label and I have, um, let's say I just I have two new artists and and they have a new album out. If I'm submitting this music to you, am am I submitting vocal music, um, or, or is it preferred that it's instrumental, or do you want both? How does that work? Um, well, it's, it's, it depends on the, the genre of music, but uh, there's more and more requests for um, songs and, yeah. and you know pop music with with, with lyrics and and, okay. and songs. So, and, and so, if, if that's the case, you know, we, we commission a lot of those albums where we want you know. Uh, great, great artists, great interpreters, and then we will will ask for for all the versions. You know, the the, the vocal one, the instrumental, and and probably uh, uh, some alternate alternate versions. So yeah. the editor can use it and, and build from there. All right, right, right. We we also have a lot of genres that that are dedicated to TV, which are purely instrumental to fit with you know TV shows that you know that don't need lyrics, right, uh, and and songs. Yeah. Okay, and so are the artists on your on your catalog? Am I? Is it? Is it generally music that is composed uh, and produced specifically for this purpose for for a catalog or or for licensing purposes? Or is is there some cases where it's music that was released to the public as an artist would on an album, a traditional album, and that we're also making putting it into the library to hopefully make money from it as well from a licensing standpoint? Uh, the, 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 the vast majority of, of the, 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 the material we produce is, is made on purpose. And, and it, it can happen we use you know, uh, some you know, recycled material, but it's very, very exceptional, very rare. And I'd say it's like less than 1% of what we do. Uh, wow. The reason why is because, you know, pro produce production music is a craft. It's it's a knowledge. It's a savoir faire, and hmm. and you know, I've, I've I've tried many times to, you know, work with with record labels and creative. I mean, composers that that came from the the the, the core world, and they all say it's a different mindset. It's a different energy. And and you 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 have to focus on different things, and some some are very good at it and and, and can do both, but it, but it's a different thing to write for library music. Um, obviously, when it comes to pop songs and 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 these genres that are very similar, um, it, 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 the 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 the, um, the boundary uh, the it shifts and and blurred and 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 then it, bec it in this specific genre of music which is pop it it becomes pretty much the same mm. uh but 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 still you know there, there's a, a way to to con to to build and and you want you want an intro you want you want a narrative in your track you want you want to build up you you want to put you know edit points and you want to put like some some drops and all those stuff that that makes a, a track very compatible and very useful for an editor and you wouldn't bother to to, to think of all those things when you if you were if you were doing a piece of music you know out of the blue so, ah. so still, even in, in, in genre music that are similar, it's it's still a slightly different job. That is really interesting. I'm very surprised to hear that. And so then it it would be it, so then a lot of artists that are featured on your site as an artist uh, and and they have a name and they have a picture, they may not have music on Spotify. They may not be playing live shows to to fans that they're just specifically artists for this purpose. Is that correct? Yeah, well, there's we have all profiles, you know. So some are uh, we're working with guys who who used to be on stage and have a career as a yeah. media artist, okay. and, and and decided to you know go into the studio and 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 do more like music for images. So they will do a bit of library, a bit of commission music for ads and and and, and film and TV. Um, some are pushing both together, but uh, you know, it's it, their artist career is not big enough, so they have to do both. Um, we also have musicians that are surrounding artists, you know, and they they are, they are touring half of the oh. year, and 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 other and, and the rest of the year they're doing things, and most of them are very good in like studios and composer, and they might not be the frontman, you know, doing their very interesting their, their their career as as a an, as an artist. But they are very good musicians, and we we have, and that those are very interesting profiles because they are very uh, aware of you know uh, what is the, the artist scene, and then 
they are very good level, you know, very good musicians, players, um, and um, we and and some, you know, and then there's some are just dedicated to only, you know, and do their whole career in the in the image and sync industry. So they they they, they do commission music and library only, and and never got on stage and never had this mix of you know artists and and library um, uh, well together. Yeah. So you, 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 it, you have all the profiles, but it, it's very interesting to that. That's what what that's one of the re- reason I found, find this area you know so 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 interesting is you you meet a lot of different people from everywhere. We we have labels from you know London DJs you know that have been active in all the eighties and two and 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 two thousands and touring all in Europe everywhere and in big festival DJing etc. And now doing their, their production and, and they also have their library music. Uh, we've we've done we we have two labels that are coming from Minneapolis, and they are working with all the guys from the indie scene. You know, some guys were working with Prince and 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 all the local uh, local scene, and they mm. have a sound, and it's so authentic, and it's 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 absolutely amazing. That's cool. And, and we, we've just signed another you know label from LA, doing guys doing you know hip hop and soul and and you know black music, and again, it's another community of composers and other and. and that's what I love, you know, when you connect with those guys and they're providing the real stuff uh, and you integrate it into your offer, providing this boutique, very creative boutique to, uh, you know, library to, to the editors. Yeah. Wow. That's very interesting. Are there certain, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning. Are there certain genres that do better than others? I imagine that changes year after year as the style changes. Um, but I know that some labels might feel left out of opportunities if they represent lo-fi or experimental music or something that's outside of the mainstream. Is there a home for everything or does something do better than others? Oh yeah, th- yeah, definitely. Well, just if you, if you turn on your TV and, and, and you will, you will hear, you know, that <laughs> you know, there are genres that have more point. than others. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'd say it's exactly like when you go to the supermarket with your car, you know, you, you, you may pick up, you know, any kinds of you know goods and 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 flavors and 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 food etc uh but some is a bit like m- once in a while you know when you buy like, like what, what when was the last the last time you you bought t- tabasco maybe right and, and 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 rather than you know you're you're probably buying like coca-cola and and and, and water and and, and beer every, every time sure so yeah. it's, it's same thing in tv you know so all the genres that, that relates to day, daytime TV show is is the mainstream. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought of that. And it, it, there is a home, I'm sure, for everything, but just not as frequently as the as the the bread and and eggs. <laughs> yeah, but but you need Tabasco. You want Tabasco. That's in right. Your, in yeah, your <laughs> yeah. Um, let me ask you. You said that you ran a record label before coming to BAM. If you were to to start a record label today, a traditional record label, what would be some of the things that you would do uh, to get into uh, to get your label into the sync licensing world to start making money for your label uh, in in music licensing? Huh, that, that's a that's a good point because um, you know since in this digital age, um, there's you know. I'm asking myself, like, you know, uh, I'm very tempted to 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 step in this and and do an uh, do do a label again. <laughs> uh, but 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 BAM is my main focus, and I, sure. I I won't do it because I'm focusing on BAM. And it's, okay, it's, it's just a it's just a it's such a great chapter of my professional life. So I, I, that's not for now. But um, I think I, I think I, I would focus on the artist and and on the music. And and I think the only way is to create something that you find really cool so cool that you're super proud of and 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 the things come after that you know you just have to do your own thing and and Uh. say like okay what's great what's cool what's inspiring and and connect with the artist to build the label and and the the record you think is is really give you you know talking to your soul basically and and then you know if that is compatible with images then you're probably going going to pitch it to some sync agency and sync partners uh as, as we were saying earlier, and 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 hope they will pick it up, and mm. and uh, uh, that's that's the only way I think. That's a really great point, and you know, that's I think that's uh, pretty easy to do for a lot of people is to just stay true to what 
what it is that inspires you. And, and uh, we've seen that all across the board in success for record labels. It's how did you get successful as well? I just liked the sound of this. And, and then it just so happened to other people liked it too. That, that's great advice. What are some mistakes you see a lot of artists or labels making when it comes to uh, that, that may affect their opportunities for sync? Um, well, I can speak for library music, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's frequent mistake we see is people arriving in library music, and I've seen it. I've seen it quite often, saying like, "Oh, library music is old school people, and we we're doing like real music, or we're doing like commission music for for sync." So. We, we, it's going to be easy for us <laughs> and, it's, and, and, and money is going to come fast <laughs> and, and one, it's never easy there's always things to learn and there's a lot of work and it's a long term thing I, I haven't seen people making like big money in, in like one year or two years it's, it's a long term thing uh, because, because it's library is about a lot of placements with low fees it's about performing rights that, that, that are very long to, to get it's a very long cycle for the right. revenue True. by the, the new uh, the date you make a placement and you de- the, the date you, you you actually get your rights paid <laughs> right uh, so for all those reasons it's a, it's a long th- a long term thing and and um, also I've seen so, a lot of people coming from the label world uh, record label world saying like oh we have a lot of stuff uh, we and we can you know uh, configure it into a library and and it's gonna work because it's 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 core music it's uh, artist music and it's yeah. gonna be great. And it's obvious that there there are amazing pieces uh, in in the in the music world that are just um, you know just like work of art. I mean, I uh, say um, um, masterpieces. Uh, as a music fan, that's that's something that is just a, a, an obvious thing. Uh, but but when it comes to catalogs for from la- record label, it's not that simple. I, and I, I've seen labels saying like, yeah, we'd like to do something with you. And 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 the choice they think is going to be easy to you know just make a compilation of their B sides and 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 unreleased tapes and it doesn't work like that you need to you need to have A sides in library and and you need to work on it and and rework and sometimes they don't have the time to do it and and so I've seen some project you know fading after a few tries because they realize like actually it it, it requires commitment and work to to make those tracks. Um, work it, because if, if it doesn't work for uh, a track for a record label, it won't work in library. That's that's as simple as that. Yeah. Wow, that's really good advice. That is really cool. I think that's great. Listen, th- Pierre, thank you so much for doing this. It's been such an honor to, to talk to you. I love uh, BAM. I love the platform you have. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it's 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 yeah. Uh, very very. Uh, I'm very very grateful um, for from this this this, this feedback. Should our should our listeners um, submit music to you, or how should they prepare themselves in their catalog to to submit music, um, or should they at all? Oh yeah, yeah, we, we we receive a lot of demos, and we are very happy to receive more. Um, well, but but we we are we release like professional stuff. So if you're very if you are a beginner in the game, you know, uh, make sure make sure your stuff is 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 um is good enough i i i it's i feel a bit sorry to say that but, no i you know, understand uh, that's a, yeah um yeah and and now we're very keen um to liars with people from um I mean, we, we connect a lot with you know labels from the us canada um uh, uk europe um and but i'm sure i, I was in contact with um a label from argentina uh, like it, it was a bit of electronica but very infused with local vibe and and it was amazing music, and and I will I will be very pleased to connect with. You know, I'm sure there's people in India, in Mexico, yes. or elsewhere in the world that have great music that never considered production music, and and I'm sure there's there's chapters to be written with with those guys, and and for the rest of the world, yes, we will always listen to to uh, to new labels and and you know creativity is everywhere, and and there are, there's amazing music coming from 
so so many people so that, and we we are very committed to it well we actually have quite a, a large listener base outside of north america and outside of europe as well and and uh or certainly outside of the uk and so um I, I i think that'll be encouraging for them to hear and you're absolutely right we've had some labels recently on here from the philippines and 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 uh it's just it's it's fun to hear music uh, outside of what we're used to, especially in North America. And uh, I could see, um, I could see a, a need for that in, with your catalog. That that's that's a really cool opportunity. Well, great. Well, thank you again. What a pleasure to ta- to, to chat with you. Well, uh, th- thanks thanks to you, really. Uh, thanks for hosting us, and and uh, thanks for you know all the the nice words you've had for Bam and. Uh, uh, I, you know your, your podcast is great. I've, I've seen you have a huge audience, and you know, well, really well done. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. To find out more about Bam Music, just go to bammusic.com. I think you'll really enjoy their site. It's an incredibly curated collection of music, uh, and check them out at bammusic.com. Thanks so much to Pierre for being on the show. Also, if you are listening to this because you are expanding your knowledge in the world of sync licensing, make sure you download my free guide to sync licensing, which is a toolkit that has a bunch of resources like checklists and a glossary and some different things that will help you dive into the world of sync licensing. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash sync. That's spelled S-Y-N-C. Otherrecordlabels.com slash sync.